good afternoon. Uh, thanks again for joining us at the Hydrogen Fuel Cells Batteries Group Exhibit in Hanover 2018. Uh, thanks for joining us and please uh, help yourself to some uh, beverages and stay with us for the duration of the talk. Today, uh, first, I'm talking to uh, Marika Reyalt, who's the Executive Director at the European Hydrogen Association with her topic H22. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you. Hi. Perfect. So first of all, we, uh, if you could please tell us a little bit about uh, what the um, European Hydrogen Association does and their, uh, in your objectives, please. Well, I think our main uh, objective since uh, the year 2000, when uh, the European Hydrogen Association was set up, is in, indeed to make sure that uh, it's H22. And yeah, it's of course a bit uh, similar, uh, I think, the situation and uh, indeed the ambition we have to make sure that hydrogen is considered uh, like the Me Too uh, initiative in finally, of course, recognizing uh, a bit more proactively uh, the needs of women uh, with regards to uh, working with uh, men and dealing with men. I think we are getting to a point where we acknowledge, and uh, I think we heard um, uh, Commissioner uh, Chefkovic uh, as well uh, before, that the technology is now coming to a status where it could be integrated. And it's nice, of course, that indeed uh, the Commission is recognizing this too in policies, but we need a more proactive and I would say a bit more aggressive approach uh, towards integration of hydrogen and fuel cell te technologies in Europe and beyond. Thank you. And uh, so in that... Uh your topic, H22, I'll mention it again. Uh, in, in relation to the financial framework and the EU policy, what can you tell us about that? Well, we have to make sure, and, and actually I discussed it briefly with Mr. Jefkovic again, because you have to grasp these people uh, really when they are uh, indeed uh, present at, at these kind of conferences. It's great that he is visiting here. And of course, his topic also on batteries is very timely. But we do need to ensure that the uh, fuel cell and hydrogen sector is represented in his uh, upcoming seven-year uh, financial framework program. I mean, it's high time that we as a uh, uh, sector come round what exactly the ask will be uh, in uh, the budget for uh, the next uh, seven years. That is being planned as we speak. And, of course, these kind of gatherings are great to demonstrate what's possible. But uh, the physical act of getting the budget into the paperwork of the Commission in the coming weeks is eminent. We really need to be on the ground in Brussels with the institutions to uh, convince them of putting in the right numbers. And that is a bit of concern because, yeah, we are working from Brussels, but uh, we don't see uh, the necessary action yet with uh, the many lobbyists also of the bigger companies represented here uh, being proactively um, uh, bouncing at the right doors. What do you see as the, the biggest uh, opportunity in, um, as far as this goes with the, new, um, with the framework and the EU policy? Well, I think it's high time to get the right message in of the ambition of industry in uh, deployment. I think uh, we cannot be uh, no longer, I would say, just complacent and uh, polite that hydrogen is being considered, like in the uh, talk with uh, Mr. Chefkovic today as well. It's great that they recognize all the technologies. And as now was saying too, the go German government is staying technology neutral. Well, that's great. Technology neutral is great, but we only have two technologies that are ready to be implemented now in order to live up to the impacts that we can make in, uh, in the next years, the necessary impacts we are expected to make in emission reduction. 
So what is the opportunity of the multi-financial framework is that in the next seven years, we have programs in place and the budget to allow industry to indeed, in the first phase, install systems that are still costly, because of course they are costly and of course it's all first time, but that allow them with a supportive regulatory framework to indeed put, make their hands dirty. Because we are ready to make our hands dirty. We in Brussels with more provocative and aggressive language and aggressive in a positive sense. Yes, to, to push the, uh, everything through and forward. Um, on that note, switching a little bit about uh, another hashtag of yours, uh, your youth too, as well as the uh, emerging, uh, emerging economy too. What can you tell us about those? Well, I think you, Stu, you're seeing it around as well. Um, this is the 24th edition. So many of us have been working in the field for quite a while, uh, pushing technology, developing technology, reporting on these developments. Uh, but I think the younger generation of engineering and also communication people, and I think especially communication people uh, entering uh, the business now, uh, are quite import important, I think, um, in relation to promoting the right messages to the Commission with new language, new faces, new indeed uh, efforts to make it uh, a bit more part of yeah, the exciting developments we are looking forward in the next decades in the energy transition. And the energy transitions, and I think also here Mr. Cevkovic has been uh, a major player in this. He has really changed the, I think, approach of the Commission to a more up-close and personal approach. And making his tours, he was in Germany last week, visiting uh, also the technology developers, the people in the field who are putting the systems in. So that is really what we uh, would need also as a communication uh, topic uh, in uh, pushing the right message uh, forward, both at uh, Brussels level as a uh, national and regional level. So, yeah, and I would say the acknowledgement of indeed a younger generation moving in is, uh, yeah, is eminent. So sort of you, you think a challenge that uh, if, the, if the young minds don't, uh, don't find their place here in Europe, they get plucked out to go somewhere else? Well, uh, of course, in this global age, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not that you can keep them close at home. I have three kids myself who I really have to uh, yeah, chase around uh, where and they are currently working. But the, yeah, the, the, the main challenge will be indeed to, um, I think, construct a community of, of, of the willing and, and what we call the deployers. And that includes, of course, the younger generation that believes that uh, Europe can set the tone. And not only with a battery alliance, but with an alliance of the right uh, technology uh, developers and installers now that can take on the first work in the regions uh, in Europe that are ready to, uh, to move. Uh, because I, I think we sometimes forget, uh, as a lot of colleagues are saying, we are talking a lot in Europe about, about policies and then we are making a roadmap again and then now we are reviewing the roadmap again uh, towards other and, and uh, more firm ambitions. But in the meantime, the work needs to start happening. And what we see here is every year, because I get inspired every year at this conference. First of all, because it's really the largest gathering of uh, colleagues uh, working in the field with their latest developments, their reports on their latest developments. Uh, but we have not to forget that in Europe we have an, a real uh, constructive effort and thanks to indeed a lot of meetings that are being set up to align those people of regional initiatives. Uh, if I would compare it to what we hear from the US and, and, and Japan, who have, of course, uh, in the case of the US, always had the Californian presence, with now other states uh, aligning as well. But I think you can argue that in Europe, we really have, since a long time, aligned, informed and mobilized regions 
to push the technology forward with bus initiatives, uh, with stationary uh, applications. And even though it hasn't reached yet the critical mass, the, uh, I think, components and the elements are there to once that we get the right uh, mobilization of funding and uh, regulatory support, and that should happen in the next three, five years, uh, I would argue, that we can set this off quite quickly. Which actually brings me to my ne next question. Uh, what are the um, EHA's expectations from the multi-annual financial framework of the EU? Uh, EU? Well, I think first of all, and that, that is true for uh, a lot of uh, policy environment, you need something big. You need something provocative. You need something that is capturing the minds. And uh, of course, the joint uh, undertaking for fuel cells and hydrogen has done a great job in pushing the technology forward, demonstration programs left and right on all uh, topics, uh, great alignment of, uh, uh, of the sector behind certain goals and targets. That program was magnificent. I think at what we have uh, together uh, been setting up over the last years was really impressive. But now needs to come the next step. And a joint in undertaking, uh, so you will, of, uh, of the willing, but then in deployment. Joint undertaking is funded by uh, research and development in the EU. That gives it a certain name tag, so you will. So it's branded uh, with colleagues too in other sectors as a program that is still uh, working on technology and development. We have to move beyond that in programs in the EU. We need definitely a bigger initiative that combines uh, ambitions of at what uh, Klaus Bonhoeffer now was saying on fuel cell tech technology implementation, pushing these type of Euro uh, European expertise further. The bus deployment program needs to be in there, electrolyzer, further push for electrolyzers in Europe. We have a great industry here that is probably still uh, also uh, globally of great importance. And we are still at this edge of uh, uh, moving into markets. And we should leverage that position. So an initiative that combines these efforts and uh, puts the right uh, installations in place in the right places, that is really what is needed. And I want to refer also to two projects that uh, uh, we have been involved in and have been uh, facilitating. One is the first uh, synergy project in the Connecting Europe facility in that respect. That is one of the biggest programs on infrastructure in Europe, both for energy and transport and I ICT. Uh, but the TSO 2020 project that was just approved on the day that uh, the Hannover Fair opened uh, last year, um, that is uh, demonstrating where these regions uh, could go combining the industrial hydrogen demand as a first enabler uh, to bring down costs for hydrogen, linked to uh, the renewable production of hydrogen in certain locations. That can really uh, be uh, complemented in, uh, with projects in uh, similar projects in other countries, like in Spain, where also a public-private uh, partnership now is working on uh, developing the first hydrogen corridors. Also there with the link to uh, renewable solar energy, when wind energy. There are enough locations in Europe that could uh, duplicate uh, this project that started in uh, the north of the Netherlands uh, last year. Thank you very much. Um, is, are there any uh, events coming up that you want to share with us? Uh, well, I think in relation to this other uh, two topic, I think uh, it's also uh, emerging economies too. Uh, the European Hydrogen Association since 2014 uh, has been part of the UNFCCC Climate Technology Center and Network. 
that is an uh, uh, organization of the UNFCCC linked to the COP and climate uh, negotiations to indeed line up the technologies that could be implemented in uh, uh, emerging economies and developing countries that of course would leverage this uh, impact uh, even uh, even more than uh, I would uh, say in Europe and uh, in the developed world. Uh, so at the WEC uh, 2018, uh, the World Hydrogen Energy Conference that is organized from the 17th till the 22nd of June, uh, in Rio de Janeiro, in Brazil, we have been working with the Brazilian uh, colleagues to get the first technical assistance uh, program of the CTCN, of this UNFCC body, uh, approved in Brazil, and also on hydrogen. So it's a, it's a first first, a first uh, program for Brazil in this context, and uh, also the first in hydrogen. And we hope that in the uh, further editions of the WAC, this uh, topic of integrating uh, fuel cell and hydrogen technologies into these emerging uh, economies with uh, UN support, uh, because the, the big uh, green climate fund that will put in uh, hundreds of uh, billions of euros uh, in the coming decades into new technology deployment, um, is ready to take off. And we have to be there. We have to be present with European uh, fuel cell and hydrogen technologies to make sure that they are uh, indeed um, uh, taking advantage of these huge opportunities. So which I was going to ask you, what is, uh, if you had to pick, say, two areas of opportunity, what, what would they be? Well, I think in Europe, as I said, we have to get our arms around this big project uh, program in the next seven years. I think uh, that has to be put on the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, the agenda in uh, the foreground. And then, uh, yeah, right next to that, the, uh, the visibility of these technologies in the realms of uh, the UNFCCC and COP. I think uh, a year also the joint undertaking and Hydrogen Europe have done a great job in being there with the big industries, also in uh, forums like the uh, Davos, uh, the World Economic Forum uh, last year, with great announcements. Now we have to translate those announcements and really work on the ground. And that has to be communicated into this uh, multi-financial framework of the EU quickly. That has to happen right now. We need to waste any more uh, talks and uh, meetings on this. It's clear it needs to happen, so we have to combine our lobbyist efforts on this. Thank you. And what is it that you would like people to take away from this conversation today? Well, I think, of course, uh, the hashtag H2. And uh, I think really with the ambitions we all see is that we are uh, collectively more aggressive in demanding that. Uh, there is no time uh, to continue on the polite uh, way we have been, do we have been indeed uh, uh, pursuing at uh, EU level. And I think I want uh, everybody to take away that we as a European Hydrogen Association are becoming more and more an alliance of, of ex experts and people working in the ground, on the ground to make sure that this has happened and communicated. And so the drive and also the collect collective drive should move from forums that are preparing roadmaps to indeed collective alliances that are put to work. Thank you very much. So uh, if anyone uh, has any questions, please. Now would be the time, and if... Okay, excuse me one second. Uh, Tim Amann from Göttingen, I'm a private visitor here. Uh, you mentioned the cost of uh, technology and implementation. Uh, wouldn't be a job a little bit easier if we pay real prices for fossil fuels and carbon dioxide? Well, thank you. Uh, this is an, an easy question to answer. By the way, I'm staying at Göttingen for the 14th time that I'm visiting this. I love the place, really. It's, uh, it's, I can indeed uh, recommend it as an, uh, another location to stay during the Hanover Fair. But this morning, I took the train 
to Hanover and I was shocked that it was a diesel train. I thought, oh my gosh, how much. I like to take a clean transport. I take the train from Brussels to Hanover. Uh, I'm taking the train from Hanover to Ljubljana because we have the big 10 T days of the Connecting Europe facility. But to take a diesel train for this half hour ride, I said, I said gosh, my carbon footprint uh, this week is already shooting over the top. No, of course. And, and we see uh, in, increasing voices uh, uh, of uh, indeed promoting that. And I think we are getting there because what we didn't touch with the H2 is, uh, of course, the diesel not to. Uh, that is definitely, an, uh, uh, I would say, also a wave coming from Germany uh, with the announcements uh, over the last uh, weeks of the uh, court decisions on allowing cities. Uh, yeah, I hope Göttingen is uh, one of the cities that will indeed. <laughs> ah, great. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, so I want, want to thank you very much. This is uh, Marika Real, Executive Director at the European Hydrogen Association, with the topic being H22. And I invite you to please go and visit their booth. That's E65 just over there, uh, if you want to further any conversation. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.